Mike, thanks for joining me. Uh, on the line with us, I have director Mike Norris, who is son of, uh, boy, I got to tell you, one of my, my heroes from childhood, Chuck Norris. And you have just been doing some great stuff lately. You, you've gone into filmmaking yourself, and you've got just a, an incredible, what looks to be an incredible movie coming out here, Amerigeddon, uh, due to be released uh, in March, March 15th. No, May May thirteenth. May thirteenth. Sorry, yes. May thirteenth. Um, tell us a little bit about what brought you to filmmaking. What made you decide to to use this medium to tell these stories and and, and bring us to to that point, please? Sure. You know, well, really, what brought me to filmmaking was my father. Uh, he really started his career. Uh, in my teenage years, um, him and I, when I was a child, he owned karate schools. And so every weekend we would go put on demonstrations, put on fight scenes. And um, unfortunately, just in a bad timing and uh, he ended up losing all his karate schools. Um, and one of his students was Steve McQueen. And Steve said, uh, who, who taught me how to ride a motorcycle? I mean, Wow. I think that's just the coolest thing. I, Steve McQueen taught me how to ride a motorcycle as a kid, but uh, he told my dad, why don't you try acting? My dad's going, oh, no, I, I, I can't do that. I, I'm too shy. And he goes, just let everybody do all the talking and you say what's important. And so my dad really followed that philosophy, and it was beautiful because at 15, 16 years old, I had a front row seat at seeing who I believe to be you know, a, a John Wayne being created to the American public. America needed Chuck Norris in the early 80s, through the 90s, you know, through Walker, Texas Rangers. So I was exposed to uh, the film industry there. As soon as I got out of high school, I was a production assistant. I was the guy running to get uh, people coffee, uh, drop uh, paperwork off. Um, but I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the process and, and slowly, um, you know, uh, I was asked to act in a movie and I did that. That was fun. So I made, oh, shoot, uh, 15, 20 movies in the 80s and the 90s. Um, the, the thing that I, I noticed that I really wanted to try was the directing part of it. And it was on the Walker, Texas Ranger series that I got the opportunity to uh, become a director. Um, so that was just a huge blessing uh, to do that. A great learning experience. Um, you know, it was awesome to be able to work with my father on a daily basis. Uh, he's tough to work for, but uh, it, it was great. And once Walker was over, it was then that I decided, okay, you know, I, I've been so blessed. What is it that I really want to do now? Um I'm, I'm from Los Angeles, California. During the uh, years of Walker, I had three children. And I, just, I was thinking to myself, I, I can't take these kids. I am not going to go back to California. And I'm not going to subject my kids to the ridiculous stuff that goes on out in California. So we settled in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas. It's been great. We got a great church, great school, great friends. And... So after after Walker was over, it was really on my heart. Being a being a Christian man, I wanted to do films that glorify Christ. I it was just a passion of mine, and we've done oh I don't know six or seven of those films. Um, and my partner Gary Haven, who's just a great man of the Lord, a great man, a businessman, um, and he's a guy that puts his money where his mouth is. And we were talking, and he has um, he has a very interesting set of his thoughts on the way our country is, the way uh, our governments run, who's running the government. So he said, you know, we'll make uh, this one, we'll make a faith-based movie. And it, and it was really for him and I, even though we were friends, it was the first time we'd done any business together. And so we did the movie. It came in on time. It came in on budget. Um, and we found out, wow, we have a really good working relationship. And that's when he came up with the uh, concept for Amerigeddon. Um, you know, and as he's going through this, now, Jason, I'm, uh, I'm awake. 
Uh, but I think there's levels, you know, uh, of people, um, you know, as to, uh, you know, where they are. It doesn't matter uh, where, where they are with their walk with the Lord or where they are as an American, where they are as, um, you know, where they are as Amer an American. Sure. And, and that a is lot of so important right now. A lot of people are waking up because things are getting, you know, difficult for them and their family now, whereas before they were kind of comfortable and okay with things. Unfortunately, the worse things get, the more people that wake up. But there's definitely that, that you know, there, there's definitely a learning curve to this awakening to, to really find out what's happening behind the curtains. You're, you're 100% right. And, um, and the more uh, awake I get... Um, you know, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. The more awake I get, the calmer I am. But I believe, um, I believe this has all been pre predestined, pre-planned. This is something that goes back hundreds of years. Uh, this elite, uh, these elites that are actually controlling and the establishment controlling the people it's all about control they are trying to control our minds they are to, trying to control our buying power they're they're trying to control everything and it, it was really interesting because we started Amerigeddon literally two years ago we started on the script uh it took us uh, a good while to do the script we started filming the movie in january of 2015 now you know, you, uh, Oath Keepers, uh, some other organizations that are like-minded, they got it. But I'd say 90% of the world that is really kind of coming together this year going, whoa, what's, what is going on with our government? What is going on with our leaders? And really, I'm not endorsing anybody, but it was really Donald Trump that kind of, uh, he, he, he kicked the hornet's nest. Did I? Oh, Jason? Yep, still here. Oh, okay. I just lost the picture here. No problem. Um, you know, it was like Donald Trump really kicked the hornet's nest and said, you know, start talking publicly about the establishment, about uh, the lobbyist buying and selling politicians, you know, like they're going out to buy a gallon of milk. Um, so I, I find it uh, really incredible how the timing of everything worked out, where here's our film, Amerigeddon about um, an army lieutenant who is being, after an EMP strike, is being ordered to fire on American citizens, and he's going, whoa, I, that, that is not what I signed up for. I signed up for to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. And fortunately, there was a backup plan in, the, in our film where he gets back to Texas to his family and his mentor, who, um, you know, kind of hunker down after the EMP strike. But it's really all leads to what, what the government wants to do is they want to control us. They want to control us. And that's what our film is about saying, no, we will not be controlled by the government. We are prepared to stand up and fight against tyranny. And, and, and that's what our movie's about. And, and I just find it amazing how timely everything is right now. Uh, Jade Helm was a big deal. That ha we, our film has, you know, has that feel to it about the exercises they were doing here in, in Texas, the Jade Helm drills. Um, so I, I, we, we talked briefly about how I believe this is a divine uh, movie for this time in our world. Um, I, I, I couldn't agree more that um, I, I believe that 100%. It really sure seems to be. I mean, you look at what's happening, and, and I mean, here, I'm sitting today, we've got a, another round of indictments coming down for what happened at Bundy Ranch. I was there as alternative media, carrying uh -huh. a camera and a microphone, and yet I, I'm spending as much time with my family right now that I can, because I don't know if and when I'll be picked up for being there and taking a stand. A lot of these these things you're talking about are very real threats to us right now. And I don't think, you know, the, the rest of America, I mean, there's certainly a segment that understands that, but the vast majority of America, I think, doesn't realize just how far we've gone down this rabbit hole 
Um, but we are seeing people stand up. We are seeing, you know, people go out to Oregon and Bundy Ranch and these different, you know, situations where, where you've got just good, hardworking Americans who, who, who have their belief structure and believe very strongly about freedom and, and believe that it's, it's a, um, a work of providence to go and be a part of this. And the government sure doesn't like it. They're sure fighting it tooth and nail and, and arresting people that, you know, friends of mine left and right have been arrested. Friends of mine have been killed now. Um, for going and, and basically occupying a, a federal building much like our own attorney general did uh, back in the 60s with the Black Panthers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so we're living in just astounding times. And I, the, the timing of the movie, I think, is just, it's incredible. It, it, it Really, we need it. We need, you talked earlier about how your father was the hero for, you know, our generation coming up, and we needed that. Well, we need our heroes now. And we need our storytellers now more than ever. Um, and, and Jason, let me tell you who our heroes are now. Our heroes are Oath Keepers. Our heroes are those people at Bundy Ranch. Um, Lavoy... Um, Finnecum. Um, fin Finnecum, yeah. I, you know what? I, I pray to God, Jason, that um, I have that strength. I have that courage when that actually happens to me, because I know it's coming. I've already, I, I've got my daughter here with me today at work, and, who's in the movie. Uh, she, she's in the film with us. And she was going through YouTube, looking at comments on uh, the YouTube. And all of a sudden, I see a look on her face. I'm like, what's the matter? And she goes, Daddy, somebody says right here they want to kill you. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, you know, don't don't worry about that stuff. I've got that under control. So my priority is, yeah, sure. I want everybody to go out and see this movie. I want everybody to go support this movie. But man, we've got to be prepared. We've got to have our families in order. We got to have our world in order. We got to have our lives in order. And we have got to be prepared because this is coming. This is coming. And uh, it, it, it's coming. And I, I just pray to God that when it happens, you know, that I have the, I have the strength that I see so many of you uh, at Oath Keepers, you have the convictions you have. Um, Cause I, I've got one foot, I've got one foot in both worlds. Um, it's not a great place to be. I live in the suburbs a little bit, but I do have places that, um, my family knows if anything happens, this is where we meet. That's where my guns are besides what I have at home for personal protection. But this is where, this is where, this is where our refuge will be when something happens. Well, there's been just a, an astounding amount of work, whether it's James Wesley Rawls or, or other people that are, are doing work in this realm. My question to you, next question is, how has the pushback been from the, the status quo, from the film industry? Um, did they want to see this movie get filmed? Did they want to try to stop it from happening? Was there any pushback at all? There, there was. Um there was, I, you know, some strange, there was a lot of strange occurrences during the film while we were filming this. We were filming uh, in Central Texas, and out of the blue, uh, Alex Jones is in the movie. He plays a part in this movie. Right. And out, out of nowhere, four Black Hawk helicopters start flying in formation over the courthouse we're filming in, circling and circling wow. circling and everybody's going oh look at that isn't that cool check out these helicopters and i'm going no no that's that's not cool that uh so so yeah that's happened i've had a number of death threats that's fine i could take it you know it's when my kids start seeing seeing this stuff uh that it bothers me but fortunately uh you know, my, my daughter and uh, her brother, uh, they're twins. They're 16. They get it. My daughter far more than my son. Um, I have a 21-year-old daughter that goes to the University of Arkansas. And um, so we, we've had uh, 
we we've had a lot of pushback, uh, especially from Hollywood. They, of course, they don't want this uh, movie seen. We it's not a a big huge studio film. We we took the approach of making this movie like I think every American should take approaching life. Don't um, if you've got a dollar to spend, don't go spend two dollars. Well. It was the same thing on this movie. Gary Haven, who is our executive producer and the creator of this whole thing, and who, Jason, I would love for you to speak to because uh, Gary Haven is uh, a man on fire for the Lord, but he has been exposed firsthand to the demonic elites that are pulling the puppet strings to our government. I'm talking firsthand. Wow, let's set it up. Yeah, a absolutely. Because you, he will get into a, a dialogue with you that um, you, you and him could, could very much be in sync. Where, I, Jason, I'm new to this. I'm new to this whole whole thing about. Even though I knew it, I just I was one of those people that go, "Yeah, boy, the government's bad. Boy, I don't like uh, the liberal government." Well, guess what? Now you know what I know. I don't like the government. I don't like the conservative government, nor do I like the liberal government. Yeah, it, um, it all seems to be two sides all, of the same coin. It, it is. And I'm one of these, you know, conservatives and GOP, <coughs> excuse me, all, all this stuff. And the more I find, the more I learn, the more I go, it's all the same. They're all bought and paid for. So... And, and and it's the lobbyists that are that are pulling the strings. We do not have a vote. We do not have a vote in this country. We really don't. I, I've I've served as election judge before and saw firsthand just how how easily it's all manipulated and and how the data is just shuffled and not used and it's just it, it, it's astounding. But again, so many people don't know about it. But yet we've got an awesome opportunity here because I mean, response from what I'm seeing to to your movie coming out is going to be just phenomenal um and and we're going to do our part to try to, to help get the word out um i think people are ready for this message but a lot of them just right now are are not stupid but ignorant they don't have the information yet we've got to get that to them now i i, I write articles and i do youtube videos but i think people who do like musicians my friend jordan page and and you who do movies that, that's such a critical part of the puzzle that we have got to to fully embrace and support because you're able to reach a, a, a part of the population that others can't that you know we're kind of preaching to the choir on Facebook and, and on YouTube people who are already interested but you're able to, with a film to reach out to people that may not have ever heard about these topics before and introduce them to things like uh, an EMP blast and, and, and you know a financial collapse gun confiscation um, topics that are very important and and yet they may not have, have really delved into. Yeah, and you know what? Those topics are the single most important topics we could be talking about. Our money, our guns, our freedom. Absolutely. I, you know, I, it, it, and, and it, it boggles my mind. I have, fam I have family members that are so far... Why do people need guns? Let's level the playing field. And, and I just watched uh, on uh, Oath Keepers uh, about the uh, Black Lives Matter thing, and they're, they're telling white people that we should kill ourselves? Are you kidding me? That, it, yeah, it's just crazy. I, I, I'm not buying into it. It's all a George Soros uh, demonic, and I'm not buying into it. I'm digging my heels in. I, you know, I, uh, I, 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 I'm stepping out on the limb, Jason. And, you know, uh, I already know my name's on the list. I already know my career in Hollywood's over. Uh, but that's okay. Cause I'm going to keep on making movies and I'm going to keep on making movies that expose the truth that I know it. I'm going to keep on making movies that, uh, glorify our Lord. Uh, but I think it's, really interesting because with with Amerigeddon, what we've done is, you know, there's a lot of uh, great movies and they all, within the in the background of the movies they talk about this, like the Hunger Games everybody being divided up and put into these sections. What are those? Those are FEMA camps. Exactly, FEMA regions. Up, 
They put lipstick on it, but you take the lipstick off of a pig, it's still a pig. So what we've done is we've just made it, there is this family, this happened to this family. Um, we call out the National Defense Authorization Act, uh, number uh, 13603, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, we, we, we lay it all out there. We, I mean, we just lay it all out there as a movie. We're not disguising it as anything else, but this is our movie, and this is what could happen. We call it a true story that just hasn't happened yet. Well, with without giving out any spoilers, give us a quick synopsis about the storyline um, and what what topics we can expect to see be seeing hit being hit on. A absolutely, I'll give you the whole rundown. Um, you know, it opens up in a, in a uh, in the Capitol with uh, a private citizen confronting a Senate panel uh, about. Um, you know about all the about our greatest threat, which we've in the movie we call our greatest threat, is an EMP strike, because if an EMP strike hits, people have no idea oh. after three days yeah. what's going to happen. After nine days, it's just game over. G game over. Game over. And um, so, which leads into we uh, our hero of our two heroes of the story. One of them's a lieutenant in the special forces who is being trained in urban training and slowly but surely um, they're saying you may have to fire on American citizens. And he says, no, there, you know what? I have been sworn to protect and uphold the constitution of the United States. I will not fire on innocent American citizens. I will not fire on American citizens. And after the EMP blast, that is tested. We have an EMP that knocks out the power grid, and it's uh, and our hero has to get back to Texas to regroup with his family that is fully set and fully prepared. Now, our hero, they brand as a traitor and a domestic terrorist. So the United Nations is brought in, and a small group of the United Nations is sent to the ranch in Texas where this young uh, army lieutenant is, and they come to get the guns, they come to get the ammunition and all the supplies and arrest him for uh, being a domestic terrorist. And uh, in our movie, we say, hell no, it ain't going to happen. We'll fight. And that's when the, the battle starts. There we go. Unfortunately, we're so much closer than people realize that that being the reality of things and, and boy, it, it could be so easily avoided if we just were to take control again. I mean, we could harden our infrastructure for an EMP with just a billion dollars. Um, you know, that, that's nothing compared to what we spend every day on, on, you know, our ongoing wars and whatnot. So it was. Yeah, well, we've got a trillion dollar jet that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. You know. So you you are one hundred percent right. For one billion dollars, our whole infrastructure is secured on our our grid. Now, if it does go down, how do we fix it? Well, China's got the parts we need to fix our power grid, and it would take over a year to get that done. By which time we have devolved to you know the the eighteenth century again. Yeah, and ninety percent of our population will die. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're can and, and, and Jason, if I may say so, please. I firmly believe. I firmly believe that that's the plan. Depopulation. It well, is... they tell us this. They tell us this in their white papers. They tell us this at the Georgia Guidestone. They tell us this everywhere. Absolutely. But people are not hearing it. It goes in one ear and out the other. Let me go to work. Let me, you know, let, 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 let me just bury my head. Well, I can tell you, I've, I've been to Bundy Ranch. I've been to every operation other than Ferguson, my boots on the ground that Oath Keepers has done since Bundy Ranch on. And I can tell you that there there is an overarching umbrella between all of these these operations that that it all ties back to um, mineral rare earth minerals and and yep. China and the Clinton Foundation and we've got all everything to back that up. It's coming out in time, but that's yep. that's the overreaching. I mean, you look at it; it really is the um, the the corporatists uh, just taking what they want. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I believe to take it one step further, you go on top of that. I believe it's a demonic. It is demonic. You break it down. The people at the top are actual people that have sold their soul to the devil for power. 
I, I look at these actions and I break it down to its its most simple form, and I cannot deny it's anything but a, a truly a battle between good and evil. And and the reason I I take my part in this battle is for my children. You know, the world they're going to inherit from us. It either is going to be a nightmare or, you know, we can try to make it better and let that battle fall on us. And I've got some big, you 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 have a family legacy to uphold, and I understand that. I'm a direct descendant of Patrick Henry, so oh, I, I really feel that I have a family legacy to my help, family help create this country. Well, it's, it's my job now. That torch is being handed. It's my job to help fix this country now. So that's... Yes, part of why what i i do and again we we our generation needs its storytellers it needs its its legends and its heroes and and you come from part of that that legacy already so yeah, it's uh it's a a wonderful legacy to be a part of and um you know thank god that i i had my father to instill um some knowledge to me as a young man that have carried on to now where I can now look at the world in a certain way, uh, especially with, uh, people like Gary Haven being such a mentor to me. Um, but is your, I, I, is I, your dad I, awake to all this going ab on? Absolutely. I, I figured that, that was the case. Yeah. He, he is awake. He is awake. Um, what, what does he think of the movie? He, excited? He, he loved the movie. He loved the movie. And I was really, I was really surprised. I knew he would like it. Um, but I, I was waiting for him to go, whoa, son, you went a little too far out on this one. But he says, son, you got something. There you and go. I need to see this. And I, I was, wow, thank you so much. And, you know, just even for him who, you know, to put it out on his Facebook, hey, my son's got a movie coming out, check it out, go support this film, was, was such a huge blessing. Uh, you know, he's so busy doing so many things. And just to get his endorsement uh, was really great. But I would just encourage uh, anybody, Jason, at Oath Keepers or people listening, you know, come check out AmerigeddonTheMovie.com. Go to our Facebook page. Check it out a little bit. Um, we're picking out our theaters. We're, you know, I wish we could open up in 4,000 theaters across the country, but uh, that's just not going to happen. So um, that, that was actually going to be one of my next questions was where can people go to see the movie? How can they find out where it will be in their area? And is there plans to do a, like a digital streaming version of it for those who can't get to one? Absolutely, absolutely. We will have that. Um, we I, we're going to open up nationwide, but it's a, we're going to be kind of spot spotted. We'll be in uh, Phoenix, uh, somewhere in Utah. Uh, we'll be heavy in the Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, uh, Austin area, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, so what we've done is we've looked um, at where people are that are like-minded and we're trying to what we're trying to do is bring the movie as close to them as we can because i know the simple fact of the matter is uh somebody may have to drive by four movie theaters to be able to go see our film in a theater um i i totally understand that and realize that and that's why it, it's really important that we almost build our own army behind this of people that go i get it um you know we're going to be putting up clips that are very relevant to what's happening before the the movie comes out um you know online for people to see uh to get them more interested and more excited about you know really calling up somebody going hey yeah it's a 10 uh, mile drive but we're going to go see this movie so we'll have by next week on our website, uh, marigeddonthemovie.com, we'll, we'll have all the theaters listed. Uh, after the first week, if, um, you know, people do support it, we are prepared to go wider. And then the theaters, if, look, if the theaters are making money, because they're the only ones that make money putting the movie in the theaters, is the theaters. Well, producers don't make money. Uh, that's just the simple realities of it. But it's important for us to try to get it out there, uh, you know, into the movie theaters because it'll only help us when the time comes in August when it comes out on a streaming service or a video on demand or uh, a DVD at Walmart. Well, is there anything you want to hit before we uh, let you go? Anything we haven't hit so far? 
Um, no, I can't think of anything, Jason. I, I just, I really need to say thank you because it, it's very uh, bold and it's very brave of Oath Keepers to, uh, you know, I know this is what you do, and um, but I, I just want to say thank you to you guys and Oath Keepers for having me on and and letting me tell you about this film um, because not not many people are. We're, we're you know. I, I went to go buy some bullets at uh, my gun shop the other day, and I, I just walked into the owner and I said, "Do you have 90 seconds?" And I told him, "I said I made this film. It comes out May 13th." I said, "We're getting no support out of Hollywood. We're doing it all ourselves." I go, "Can I show you the trailer?" He watched it. He loved it. He put up a poster in his uh, in his store, and he's running the trailer on a loop inside the gun store. So. That, that's kind of how we're having to go out and market our movie. Um, you know, you're not going to see hundreds of commercials because of the political landscape going on right now with, uh, you know, Trump, Cruz, Bernie, Hillary, everybody. They are there's so much money going into media right now that we, we just are having a hard time finding our spot. But uh, thank God for people like you and Oath Keepers that we're able to get our voice heard. So that's what I'd like to say is. Thank you for uh, allowing us to do this. Absolutely, and I, I want to conclude by saying thank you for, for having the courage to make a movie like this. It does put you in the spotlight, and you know my, my children know what it's like to have their dad get death threats, and that's, it, we've got to put ourselves out there. We've got to take these risks, so I commend you for taking those risks. I know it's, uh, it, it can be daunting at first, but you know, you know you're making traction and when you're starting to get that flack. You know you're over target when when they're they're paying attention to you so yeah. uh keep doing what you're doing keep up with that good fight and uh i am very very excited to see the movie and i'll certainly help uh however i can so thank you for for putting this movie together and putting it out there thank you so much jason uh, and i just really appreciate it and also um just on the side note i'd like to get uh you on the phone with gary haven because i think the conversation between you and gary gary would be fascinating Absolutely. We'll get him on the show right away.